Can we get 25? So you can have a seat. That's fine. Microphone. Oh. Right. Maybe if you can just talk real loud. Oh, hold on just a minute. I really can't hear you. Oh, I have a hernia problem. That's why I start pain. Okay. Oh, you have you have a problem with a hernia. Yes. Okay, and it's it's really bothering you to the point yeah. where you can't concentrate. Yeah. It's today's I don't know why it bothers me too much. Why? I know, but what what I want, want to make sure you understand if I excuse you today, I, I'm excusing you from the jury. I'm, I'm trying to do go today home and take medicine and rest, get ready for tomorrow. I can't. I can't do that. I, I can't. I I can't have that done. We have to keep going. Okay. So, I mean, has it been bothering you other days in the while you've been on the jury? No, today start now. Never bother me more than one two week I'm here. Okay, but it might bother you also tomorrow. I'm not sure, but uh, I'm trying to do my best to. I know you're trying to do your best, but I, yeah. I want to make sure you're healthy too. I don't want you to to ruin yeah. your health for this. All right, just sit there for a second. If I can have the attorneys, do you, do you have any? All right, sir, we just want to make sure you're healthy and everything, so we're going to excuse you from this jury, okay? All right, just take care of yourself, okay? All right, thank you. All right, you can, you can go back. Thank you. All right. Yes, ma'am. Do you have something before the jury comes in? Okay. Which one? Five forty-eight. Perfect. Okay. All right. Okay. Five forty-eight is done. All right. I did have one question. Um, there seems to be a few. Oh, you can. That's okay. You can stay there. We don't have the jury here. Uh, there seems to be a few uh, exhibits. I just want to make sure of. Um, you gave us, we have everything that you just gave us earlier from Dr. Kipper's deposition, but I just want to make sure if there were the redactions needed for 395 or 414, or am I using mine for that? I just want to see. I mean, I can just give you the numbers of ones I'm not sure about, and you can look at it, and we can move on. I just did 405, 455. 
304, 307, 395, and 414. I'm just not sure if those, I'm waiting for redactions or if I'm using the ones I'm going to use. And then you had one that, uh, I'm not sure if you said 1083 or 283. So if you could let me know. I, I heard 1083 as the exhibit number. Jamie heard 283. So I just want to make sure we get the right one. That was with Dr. Kippers. You said 1063, then you said either 1083 or 283, and I'm not sure which. You can get back to me on it, Mr. Nadelhoff. I, I don't want to catch you off guard. You have the redacted version of 304, 455, 405. Oh, well, there you go. I think it's probably 283. 283? Jamie's always right. That's good. Good to know. Okay. All right. If you want to hand those up, that would be fantastic. All right. <coughs> Is there anything else before the jury comes? Uh, yes, Your, Your Honor, just for the record, um, Plaintiff's Exhibit for, uh, 47, Plaintiff's Exhibit 48, and Plaintiff's Exhibit 41 were also um, used and offered during Kipper, but I, doc, Dr. Kipper's deposition, I believe um, I passed the redacted versions of those up to you. Yes, we have all of those. Okay. Thank you. I think that should be everything. If not, we'll 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 get back with you. <laughs> Thank you. Know where to find you. All right. Okay. Are we ready for the jury then? All right. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Just to let you know, Juror 25 was experiencing some health issues, and obviously your health is a top priority for us. So I went ahead and excused him for the jury, and that's why we have alternates. So, okay? All right? All right, thank you. All right, we can continue with Ms. Lloyd's testimony. You were, it says, this protracted therapy will include 12 private counseling and personal psychotherapy, personal psychotherapy and couples therapy with his fiance Amber. Both are in agreement to this plan. Do you see where I'm referring? Yes. Um, do you recall that couples therapy was a component of Mr. Depp's treatment? I don't recall what was that between him and the doctor. Do you recall Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd attending couples therapy together? Yes. Um, if we could turn to the next page here. And then at the top, it says, I met with Amber for 90 minutes and discussed the above and her concerns that he be strictly monitored and supervised. Um, do you recall Dr. Kipper meeting with, with Amber early on in Mr. Depp's treatment? I do not. If we could bring back up um, document D, which is now marked as exhibit 22, is that correct? 23. 23, okay. Um, can we please go to the entry for June 24th 2014, which is on DEP 1661. Okay. 
Now, um, with respect to the entry for June 24, 2014, this is a note, this is an entry you prepared, correct? Correct. And the first line says, RN and MD met with patient's fiance to inform her of treatment plan for patient. Do you see that? I do. Um, does this refresh your recollection that you attended a meeting with Dr. Kipper and Ms. Hurd concerning Mr. Depp's treatment? I don't recall the meeting. Do you have any reason to doubt that this meeting occurred? No. Do you have any, um, other than what's reflected in this note, do you have any other independent recollection of any such meeting with Dr. Kipper and Ms. Hurd? I do not. Um, if I could direct your attention just to the last line of the note, it says here, um, she was encouraged to call RN or MD with any questions or concerns that might arise. Do you see that? I do. Um, throughout your treatment of Mr. Depp, did Ms. Hurd reach out to you with questions and concerns? Yes. She had your phone number, correct? Yes. And I think we saw some text messages um, that Mr. Nadelhoff was asking you questions where she, Ms. Hurd was reaching out to you, correct? Correct. Um, when Mr. Depp became your patient, did Ms. Hurd ever show you any pictures of Mr. Depp? I don't recall. Do you recall Ms. Hurd showing you any pictures of cocaine? I don't recall. Did, do you recall Ms. Hurd ever showing you any audio recordings of Mr. Depp? I don't recall. Um, okay, I'd like to move on to the um, Mr. Depp's detox and that was on his private island, correct? Correct. Um, and you travel, you traveled down to the island with Mr. Depp, is that right? I don't recall. I'd have to, if it, it should be in my notes. Oh. Um, we can look at those in a moment. Um, but you, you were on the island with Mr. Depp for the correct. majority of his detox, correct? And when you um, were on the island, did you see where Mr. Depp was staying? Yes. And um, was Ms. Hurd staying with him in that location as well? Yes. And what did their accommodations look like? Can you be more specific? Uh, what, what, what type of structure were they staying in? It was a house. Um, could we pull up? Um, document E, which is a, a short video. Please stand by. And for the record, this was produced as DEP Bearing Exhibit 25. Let me know whenever you need me to play, Council. Uh, please play. Uh, please play. Thank you. Ms. Lloyd, do you recognize the location reflected in that video? Yes. And uh, what is it? It's the Johnny's home on his island. And is that where he was staying during the detox process? Yes. Is, is that video consistent with how the house looked in August of 2014? Yes. Okay. 
um, is there any part of the house that's not reflected in that video? The bathroom wasn't in the video. When you were on the island, were you, you were personally overseeing Mr. Depp's detox process, correct? Correct. And how often would you um, see him in person during that? I've been answered. It varied. Did you see him in person at least once a day? I cannot recall. When Dr. Kipper arrived, do you recall how often he would see Mr. Depp? I do not. What substances was Mr. Do excuse me, what, what substances was Mr. Depp detoxing from? Opiates. Was he detoxing from any other substances? Not on the, uh, no, I don't recall. Um, have you overseen other patients detox, detoxing from opiates before you were caring for Mr. Depp? Yes. How many would you estimate? Hundreds. Hundreds. What does, what does that process, what does that process do to the person physically? They go through withdrawal symptoms and we medicate them. And what type of withdrawal symptoms have you observed? Nausea, vomiting, body aches, um, hyloerection, gonorrhea, breathlessness, anxiety. Is there a time during the detox process when those symptoms are typically the most acute? Yes. Yeah. What, what stage in the process is that? Typically day three through five or six. How would you describe Mr. Depp's physical state throughout the detox process? I don't recall specifics. I'd have to refer to my notes. How would you describe Mr. Depp's psychological state throughout the detox process? I don't recall. I'd have to review my notes. Um, all right, let's go back to your notes then, which I believe is um, exhibit 23. Um, could we first go to the entry dated August 8th, 2014. Okay. Miss um, Lloyd, does this refresh your recollection as to when you arrived on the island to assist Mr. Depp in his detox process? According to my notes, it was August 8th. Okay. And so, as I think we established earlier, you met Mr. Depp in in June, um, fair to say that you had known him for about two months at this time? Correct. Okay. Um, can we please go to the entry for August 11th, 2014? Okay. Um, and this is a note you prepared? Um, if you need to take a minute and read it over, um, just let me know when you're done or I can just go right into it. to say that this note reflects that Mr. Depp was experiencing discomfort on this date? According to my notes, yes. It says he was experiencing muscle spasms, chills, and pains, right? Correct. 
did you um, personally observe Mr. Depp in this state? Um, according to this note, it does not appear I did. Okay. Um, are these symptoms typical during a detox process? Yes, they are. Okay. Um, can we please go to the entry for August 12, 2014? Um, and I believe we looked, you looked at this earlier, but I just like to direct, direct your attention to the last line in this first paragraph and be arriving this morning and we'll assess the patient. Do you see that? Where are we on? What? So I directing your attention to the, um, August 12th, 2014 entry. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, okay. Um, and so based on your note, it, it appears that Dr. Kipper arrived on the island on August 12th. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, was the plan always for Dr. Kipper to come down to the island to attend to Mr. Depp? I don't recall. Um, do you recall any issues in your caring for Mr. Depp prior to Dr. Kipper's arrival? I don't do you recall any medical issues arising with Mr. Depp before Dr. Kipper arrived that caused you concern? I don't recall. Um, if there had been a serious medical issue with Mr. Depp prior to Dr. Kipper's arrival, would that have been reflected in your note? Yes. If Mr. Depp's behavior had been unmanageable prior to Dr. Kipper's arrival, would that have been reflected in your notes? Yes. Um, can we please go to the next entry for August 13th? Um, and Ms. Lloyd, this is also a note that you prepared? Yes. Okay. Now I'd like to direct your attention to the portion of the note that starts with 1340. Um, again, this is military time, is that right? Correct. And I think you testified earlier, this is the time that you prepared the note, not the time of the events reflected in the note, is that right? Yes. Sometimes, I mean, I, I don't recall specifics, but sometimes they were at times and sometimes they were done later. So generally speaking, when you prepare these nursing notes, um, how long after the events reflected in the note was the note actually prepared by you? It varied. Okay. Okay, so directing your attention back to the portion that starts with 1340. Um, do you see where it says patient's fiance text to say he it wasn't feeling well. MD orders Phenos 64.8 milligrams, Neurotin 600 milligrams stat. Patient and fiance informed that today and tomorrow will be the most difficult days and to keep in close contact with us. Do you see that? Yes. Um, do you recall informing Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd that the following days would be the most difficult? Just what was stated in my notes. Okay. Can we please go to the entry for August 17th, 2014? Do you see that? I do. And this is a note you prepared? Correct. Um, do you recall um, this specific event? I do not. <laughs> do you have any reason to doubt that what is reflected in your note is accurate? No. Okay. So when you wrote um, RN and MD found patient sitting quietly on his porch, you believe that's an accurate um, recitation of how you found Mr. Depp on this date? when you wrote that he was calm and stated he was frustrated, um, you have no reason to doubt the, the accuracy of that statement. Correct. Um, 
Could we please bring back up um, Exhibit 23 and specifically go to um, the August 18th, 2014 entry, which is on Dep 1677. Um, Ms. Lloyd, I'd like to direct your attention to, um, well, first of all, this is a note that you prepared, correct? Correct. Okay. And I'd like to direct your attention to the end of the note, which is actually on the second page or the next page. Um, do you see at the end here where it says patient was escorted back or escorted to bed? Do you see that? Yes. Um, would that have been you who escorted Mr. Depp to bed? I don't recall. Um, you testified earlier though, that you did, um, see Mr. Depp at, in his, the home that he was staying in on the island, correct? Correct. Um, and it says plan is to leave the island tomorrow. See that? I do. And directing your attention to the next note, August 19th. Do you see that it says um, next to 2335, arrive back in LA? Yes. Okay, so um, does this accurately, excuse me, does this accurately reflect that um, you left the island on August 19th, 2014? Um, according to these notes, yes. Um, I'd like to direct your attention to um, the August 20th, 2014 entry, which starts on the next page. And then um, if you go to the next page as well, you can see that there's another entry for August 20th, 2014. Do you see that? Oh yeah, yep. Okay. Um, on on this page here, I'd like to direct your attention to the portion that starts with twelve thirty. Do you see that? Yes. Um, now it says here RN and MD spent time talking with patient. Do you see that? I do. Um, this would have been you and Dr. Kipper, correct? Correct. And does this reflect that you spoke with Mr. Depp in person? I don't recall. I would, yes. Okay. And um, the rest, the note goes on to say, patient expressed frustration with the detox process and with not liking how the phenobarb was making him feel. Initially, he stated he was done with the process and no longer wanted MD and RN services. After processing his feelings and realizing how far he had come, and that part of his wanting to give up was due to tensions between him and his fiance. Patient fiance, RN and MD came up with a plan for fiance to take a few days for herself and patient was willing to continue treatment, but was going to refuse phenobarbital from this point forward. Do you see that? I do. Okay, did I read that correctly? Yes. Um, do you recall tensions between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd at this stage in his detox process. Yes. And what do you recall about that? I recall Johnny feeling that she was trying to interfere. Um, in what way did he feel she was trying to interfere? by reporting to us things that he didn't feel were true. Can you think of a specific instance where Ms. Hurd reported something to you that was you found out was later was not true? I can't, I cannot remember specifics. 
Um, do you recall the plan for Ms. Her to take a few days for herself? I don't recall specifics. But you do recall Ms. there being tension between Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard around this time? Yes. And do you recall that having an impact on Mr. Depp's treatment? I don't recall specifics. Let's go on to the entry for August 25th, please. First of all, is this, an, is this an over you've prepared? It is. Um, directing your attention to the portion that starts with 1900. Um, first line says meeting at MD's house was quite stressful for patient. Do you see that? I do. Do you recall attending a meeting with Mr. Depp at Dr. Kipper's house? I don't recall. Um, the next line says, him and his fiance are having a hard time communicating and understanding each other's point of view and feelings. Do you see that? I do. Um, do you recall any specifics about this situation? I do not. Um, a couple sentences down, it says, plan is for fiance to start therapy tomorrow. Do you see that? Yes. Um, do you recall that Ms. Hurd um, started therapy shortly after Mr. Depp's detox process? I don't recall. Do you have any understanding as to why Ms. Hurd was starting therapy? I do not. Uh, directing your attention to the entry for August 27, 2014, which starts on Depp 1687, or 86, excuse me, 1686, yep. Um, again, this is an entry you prepared? It is. Um, okay. Do you see where it says, received text from patient's sister that patient had been recording music with his friend until five and did not go to sleep until seven and is currently sleeping? Yes. And who is um, Mr. Depp's sister that's referred to here? Christy. And at this time, had you met Christy before? I don't recall. Have you met Christy before? Yes. How many times? I, I don't know. More than once? More than once, yes. Uh, at this time, had you communicated with Christy about Mr. Depp's treatment before? I don't recall. Um, okay, the entry goes on to say, sister stated that patient and his fiance had had a disagreement last night and that patient was able to remain calm and handle the situation appropriately. Do you see that? Yeah. Um, do you recall Miss, uh, do you recall Christy telling you that? I do not. See the portion of the note that starts with 1330. I do. Um, the second line reads, patient expressing feeling about argument with fiance and feels relationship is putting unwanted stress on him right now. Do you see that? I do. Um, do you recall this exchange with Mr. Depp? Sorry, I didn't catch that twice. I'm sorry, I do not. Okay. Um, based on this note, do you, can you tell whether this was a conversation you had in person with Mr. Depp? Based on this note, yes. Um, do you recall on other occasions, Mr. Depp 
expressing to you that his relationship was putting unwanted stress on him? I'd have to review my notes. Um, okay, directing your attention down to the portion of the note that says that starts with 2130. Um, it says patient back home for patient. He has a long, he had a long conversation with fiance and they both understand that right now is a time to work on themselves as individuals. Patient's fiance now has an RN to help her anxiety and to monitor her while she is starting a new mood stabilizer medication. Do you see that? I do. Um, who was, I believe you testified to this earlier, Ms. Hurd's um, nurse was, was Erin Borum, is that right? Correct. And Ms. Borum um, was an employee of yours, is that correct? She was an independent contractor. Um, but you, you placed her Dr. Kipper, is that right? Correct. Okay. Um, do you recall when Ms. Um, Borum was assigned to Ms. Hurd? I do not recall. Do you have any understanding as to why, um, Ms. Hurd needed a nurse? Other than what my notes state, I do not. Do you recall witnessing um, Ms. Hurd being anxious or having anxiety? I do not recall. Um, now the last line here says, patient feels this will take some of the stress off their relationship. And in return, if we could go to the next page, take some stress off of him. Did I read that correctly? Thank you. Um, do you recall why Mr. Depp, Depp felt that Ms. Hurd having a nurse would reduce the stress on their relationship? I do not recall. Um, from your perspective, was it important to Mr. Depp's um, treatment that his stress be reduced? Yes. Why is that? Any patient going through detox or changes, always important to relieve as much stress as you can from them. Um, let's go to the entry for September 10th, please, which is on Depp 1694 and continues on to 1695. September 10th, 2014 entry. This is your entry, correct? You prepared this? Correct. Okay. Sorry. Um, sorry. And um, if I could direct your attention to the portion that starts with 2330, which is actually on the next page. Um, the first line says, met with patient, he complained of body aches and nausea. Do you see that? I do. Um, and does this reflect that you were physically with Mr. Depp at this time? It would, yes. Okay. Um, a couple sentences down, it says, and this portion is, is highlighted here, while RN was visiting patient, fiance came in and tried to start argument with him patient was able to stay calm and talk his fiance down. Do you see that? I do. Um, do you recall the incident reflected in this note? I do not. Do you recall any instances where you witnessed Ms. Hurd um, try to start a fight with Mr. Depp? Yes. How many instances do you remember? I don't recall specific numbers. Do you remember at least one? Yes. Do you remember more than one? Yes. More than two? I don't recall specific numbers. 
um, what, uh, what do you remember about that first instance that you can remember? I remember one night trying to leave the penthouse and Amber standing in the elevator and not letting us leave. Uh, why wasn't she letting you leave? I, I, she didn't want him to leave. Had they been fighting previous to that point? I wasn't there previously. And what's the other instance you remember? I can't remember specifics. Um, you have any reason to doubt the accuracy of what's reflected in your note here? No. Do you have any understanding as to what you meant when you said the patient was able to remain calm, was able to stay calm, excuse me, and talk his fiance down? I don't recall the events of that note. Have you seen Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard get in a fight before this date? I don't remember. Let's go to the entry for September 12th, please. Um, and this is a note that you prepared as well, Ms. Lloyd? It is correct. Okay. Um, the first line here says, RN and MD visited patient at work. Do you see that? I do. Um, and so, this reflects that both you and Dr. Kipper went and saw Mr. Depp, is that right? Correct. Um, and the entry states here, patient expressed some concerns with fiance's behavior and how it is adding stress to his life. Do you see that? I do. Um, do you recall this, Mr. Depp saying this to you in this instance? I do not. Um, do you have any reason to doubt the accuracy of what's reflected in your notes? I do not. Um, could we please go to the entry for October 22nd, 2014, which starts on uh, 1717 and continues on to Deb 1718. My notes are different. What's the top of the, I see the top of that, just so I know what I'm looking. Okay. Okay. 10, 14. First of all, this is also a note that you prepared, correct? Correct. Um, and if you want to take a minute and read through the note, I know it, it goes on for two pages. Okay. Oh. Just let me know when you read through.
fair to say that this note reflects that you and Mr. were in Georgia at this when this the events in this note occurred? I think we were at the end it says now in Georgia. I would I I don't recall but it a travel day. Well, do you see above that where it says 10 slash 22 and then below it, it says now in Georgia. Yes. Okay. Um, so based on your notes, you were in Georgia on October 22nd. Okay. Um, do you recall being in Georgia with Mr. Depp? Yes. Um, do you recall who else was with you in Georgia? I don't recall who was with us, but I, the, the purpose of the trip was to visit Amber on location. Okay. So, so Amber was in Georgia as well. Yes. Okay. Um, now directing your attention to the portion of the entry, which is on the next page and begins with 1530. Um, it states here, um, he requested an emergency session with the psychiatrist to discuss feeling about arguments with fiance and would like some tools to help him feel his, to help him deal with his emotions. Do you see that? I do. Um, do you recall Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd having a fight on this trip in Georgia? I do not. Do you recall who Mr. Depp's psychiatrist was at this time? I do not. Do you recall why Mr. Depp started seeing a psychiatrist? I do not. Um, directing your attention down to the portion of the note that starts with 2010, it says here, patient spoke to a psychiatrist for 50 minutes and was open and honest with his feelings. He feels better after conversation, but also feels he is in a no-win situation with fiance. Do you see that? I, I'm kind of lost where we're at right now. Oh, sorry. Oh, 1530. Uh, okay, yes, yeah, I see it, sorry. Okay. Um, does this reflect that you were present with Mr. Depp when he spoke to his psychiatrist? I don't remember. It was based on him telling me or if I was present. Do you recall Mr. Depp ever expressing to you that he felt he was in a no-win situation with Ms. Hearn? I don't recall those specific words. Um, but you, you wrote them in your nursing notes, correct? Um, you see at the bot, so the still in this portion that starts with 2010, do you see where it says, uh, Plan is for patient and fiance to go to dinner this evening. Patient is feeling exhausted and wants to stay home, but does not want to upset fiance. Do you see that? Uh, we're on the same page. Yes, we're still in the portion of the note that starts with 2010. 2010, okay, yes, yep. Um, Do you recall this specific um, incident? I do not. Do you have any understanding as to why Mr. Depp would be concerned about upsetting his fiance? I do not. Uh, if we could go on to the next entry, which is on the same page, uh, 1023. Um, and this is also a note you prepared, Ms. Lloyd? It is. Okay. Um, it says here you text patient to see if RN could come by and check in. Do you see that? 
I did. I do. Um, why did you want to check in on Mr. Dent? I, I don't recall. Were you ever concerned about Mr. Depp when he and Ms. Hurd were in arguments? Yes. Why were you concerned? Their arguments were a trigger for him emotionally. Any other reason? No. What do you mean by uh, a trigger for him emotionally? They would cause him to be upset, add stress. Um, the next portion of this note says, when RN arrived in the room, patient was agitated and felt fiance was using the term mania to explain his behavior and excuse herself from any fault during argument see that you yeah. um, do you have any did you ever hear miss heard use the term mania to describe mr. Depp I don't recall if that was I heard it from her or heard it that she was saying it to others but you do have some recollection of hearing that Ms. Heard was using that word, whether it was directly from her or from others. Yes. Um, the note goes on to say, patient was upset by this label. RN processed his feelings with patient and he was able to see fiance's negative behaviors. Did I read that correctly? Yes. Um, do you have any uh, recollection of what you meant when you wrote that? I do not. You don't have any understanding of what um, fiance's negative behaviors refers to? I don't recall specifics. Do you recall generally? Yes. And what do you recall? At times, what's the word? Uh, she would almost inst try to instigate him. And when you say she, you're referring to Miss Heard. Yes. Um, did you ever witness that personally? Yes. Um, on more than one occasion. Yes. ballpark how many times did you witness that during their during during the time you cared for Mr. Depp? I don't recall a number. More than five? I don't recall. Um, when you say Ms. Heard would try to instigate him, what do you mean? I remember an argument or being in there when um, he was going from room to room trying to remove himself from a situation and she would just follow him from room to room and not give him his space. And that's one specific incident, instance that you remember? Yes. Do you remember seeing that type of behavior on other occasions? Yes. Um, Are you aware of any of the fights that we just went through? Um, are you aware that any of them became physical? No. Um, from what you observed, um, what was the cause of the friction between Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard during this time? I don't know. Um, 
Uh, can we please go to the entry for November 3rd, 2014, which is on deck 172. 172, sorry, council. Um, yeah, 1721. Um, Ms. Lloyd, this is also a note you prepared? Correct. Um, and it says here, you arrived at Mr. Depp's home and he was, quote, focused on relationship with fiance and is struggling with conflicted emotions. Did I read that right? Yes. Um, based on this note, is that something Mr. Depp would have told you? Based on this note, it appears so. Um, it looks like there's another note for November 3rd below this one. Do you see that? Um, and it continues on to the next page, which is one step 1722. If we could go there, please. I'm very good. Very good. Thank you, you sound. Um, and Ms. Lloyd, directing your attention to the portion that starts with 1700. Um, do you see where it says, RN went back to patient's house. He was chatting with a friend and is feeling stressed about his relationship. Do you see that? I do. Um, and it goes on to say, he feels she is not being truthful with him and he is not sure how to comfort her about this when excuse me, confront her about this when she arrived home. Do you see, do you, do you see that? Yes. Um, and the she here refers to Ms. Hurd, is that right? Correct. Um, do you remember this exchange with Mr. Depp? Yes, yeah, you're saying. Um, do you have any reason to doubt the accuracy of your note? I do not. Uh, if we could turn to the entry for November 17th, 2014, which begins on DEP 1723. Um, Ms. Lloyd, do you see at the very bottom, uh, it says 1117? Yes. Okay, um, and then I think the entry itself is on the next page. Yes, thank you. Um, this is also a note you prepared? Correct. Um, and this says RN and MD went to patient's house to assess him. Do you see that? I do. Um, and so again, this reflects uh, that you and Dr. Kipper went to see Mr. Depp? Correct. Um, do you have any uh, recollection of why Mr. or excuse me, why Dr. Kipper was visiting with Mr. Depp at this time? I do not. Um, the next line says, patient appeared anxious and depressed over relationship issues. Do you see that? <coughs> I do. Um, and then it says, uh, patient continues to be ambivalent about relationship status. Do you see that? I do. Um, do you recall Mr. Depp expressing these sentiments to you? Objection here, say. I don't recall specific conversations. Um, but you also have, but this is what you wrote in your notes, correct? <coughs> I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Oh. Correct, sorry. Thanks. Sorry. <laughs> um, do you recall when Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd got married? I don't recall the date. Okay. Um, but you said you testified earlier that you did attend the wedding. Correct. Um, were you there to provide nursing services? I don't really recall if I was a guest or I, I, I don't think they made that clear to me. Uh, did Dr. Kipper attend the wedding? He did. And did Aaron Borum attend the wedding? He did. 
Do you recall any discussions of a prenuptial agreement between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd before they got married? Yes. And what do you recall? I don't recall specifics. What do you recall generally? I only recall what Johnny told me about the conversation. And what was that? That she didn't take it well. Didn't take what well? The idea. Sorry, I didn't hear the end of that. The idea of having to sign a prenup. Did Johnny tell you that he asked Ms. Hurd to sign a prenup? I don't recall specifics. But you recall Johnny telling you that Ms. Hurd didn't want to sign a prenup? Yes. And when you say didn't take that well, what are you referring to? From what Johnny said, her reaction was when he asked, when they spoke about the prenup. Do you recall that in January of 2015, Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd traveled to Japan together? I don't recall. Do you recall traveling to Japan with Mr. Depp? I recall being in Japan, yes. Do you remember anything specific about that trip? I do not. Do you recall Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd having a fight on a plane? I recall a fight on a plane, but I don't know the time it was around. What do you remember about that fight? It was another instance where he was sitting at a table and not wanting to talk and she wouldn't leave the table. What was she doing? She wouldn't leave the table. And he was saying, you know, please just let just just go away. And what was she saying? I don't remember. I don't remember her words. How was her tone? I don't recall. You spoke with Mr. Nadelhoff about this earlier, but at some point you traveled to Australia with Mr. Depp, right? Correct. Can we pull up what has been previously marked as Exhibit 14? I'd like to direct your attention to the March 1st, 2015 email from Dr. Kipper at 2.10 p.m. Do you see that? I do. Do you recall Mr. Depp having issues with his sleep while when he was in Australia? Not specifically in Australia. Do you recall Mr. Depp having issues with his sleep generally? Yes. And what issues were those? A hard time sleeping and staying on a sleep schedule. Ms. Lloyd, when you were in Australia with Mr. Depp, did you see where he was staying? Yes. And how many times did you go to that property? I don't recall specific numbers. Fair to say you went there multiple times, though? Yes. You talked about this with Mr. Nadelhoff earlier. At some point in Australia, you learned that Mr. Depp had injured his finger, correct? Correct. And Dr. Kipper was already in Australia at that time? Correct. And you testified earlier that you and Dr. Kipper went to see Mr. Depp after he injured his finger, correct? Correct. Do you recall anything about Mr. What do you recall about Mr. Depp's physical appearance when you first saw him? I don't recall specifics. 
What do you remember about his demeanor, if anything? I don't remember the events of when I first arrived. But you did see Mr. Depp at that time, correct? I can't recall when I initially saw him after the finger event. And I believe you testified you don't recall whether Ms. Bird was at the house when you went to attend to Mr. Depp, correct? Correct. Okay. Do you remember seeing Ms. Bird in Australia? Yes. Did you ever see any injuries on Ms. Bird when she was in Australia? Yes. What did you see? A bruise on her arm. Anything else? No. Did she have any injuries to her face that you can recall? Not that I recall. Any cuts or abrasions that you can recall? Not that I recall. Um, do you recall Ms. Hurd ever seeking medical treatment from you while she, while she was in Australia? I do not recall her ever seeking a medical treatment from me. Um, at the time that Mr. Depp injured his finger, Ms. Hurd was a patient of Dr. Kipper, correct? I'm not sure. Do you recall whether Ms. Borum was already um, assigned to Ms. Hurd? I don't recall if she was working with her at that time. Um, can we turn back to the nursing notes, which is Exhibit 23? And specifically, the entry for um, March 7th, which is on 1732. This is March 7th of 2014, or? Yeah, uh, this, it says 3 7 -15. do you see that? Oh, so 15, hold on, no. Oh, I wasn't there on 14. Yes. You said you saw a bruise on Miss Bird's arm at some point when you were in Australia, correct? Correct. Do you have any understanding of how she got that bruise? I do not. Um, okay, directing your attention to um, the entry for March 7th, 2015. Um, you see here it says MD received text message from client that he had been arguing with his wife and that he had cut his finger. Yes, I see that. Okay, so, so this is the date that um, you went and saw Mr. Depp after his injury, correct? Correct. Um, now, if I could direct your attention down to the portion that starts with 1530. Okay. Um, it says, MD cleaned and dressed wound to our middle finger. Do you see that? Thank you. Um, what does our middle finger reflect? Right. And so Mr. Depps had cut his middle right finger, is that correct? According to this, yes. Now, if I could direct your attention down to the bottom part of this entry that starts with 1130, do you see that? <coughs> I do. Now, this starts with patient and staff return from ER at 2130. Do you see that? Yeah. So um, am, I, am I, is it correct that the 11.30 at the beginning of this is referring to 11.30 p.m.? Um, yeah, um, uh, that would make sense. Oh. 
Um, yeah. So, so this is the same day that you um, were notified that Mr. Depp had injured his finger, correct? Um, according to this, yes. Okay. And this was also the same day that Mr. Depp was, was seen in the AER for his finger, correct? Right. So um, in the middle of the page here, do you see, or in the middle of this entry, do you see where it says, upon arrival back to apartment, patient discussed feelings of anger and sadness about his relationship. Patient was encouraged to stay away from wife as the relationship is toxic. Patient expressed verbal understanding and why they needed to separate. Do you see that? I do. Um, do you have any recollection of this conversation beyond what's reflected in the notes? I do not. Do you have any reason to doubt the accuracy of what you documented in your notes? I do not. Um, do you recall advising Mr. Depp to stay away from Ms. Heard. I don't recall anything other than what's stated in my notes. Do you recall ever having the view that Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard's relationship was toxic? Yes. And what's the basis for that view? Conversations that he would share with me. Um, what did Mr. Depp share with you? I don't remember specifics, just like things we reviewed in my notes that he would be emotional and that the relationship was causing him stress. Um, After Mr. Depp injured his finger in Australia, do you recall him coming back to LA? Yeah, I don't recall specifics, but I know we did return to LA at some point. Was Mr. Depp's hand bandaged at all? Yes. And why was that? At one point, I mean, beforehand, we kept it bandaged to keep it clean, and then he had surgery, and it was bandaged after the surgery. Do you recall that Mr. Depp had pins in his finger? Yes. Um, do you recall Mr. Depp reporting that his finger was in pain? Yes. How would he report his pain to you? I have to review my notes for specifics. Okay. Um, well, let's take a look at the entry in your notes for March 23rd, 2015, which is on page. <coughs> Starts on page one seven three five and goes on to seven three six. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um. Actually, before we turn to that one, do you see in the entry above for three twenty two fifteen? Do you see that entry? Yep. Okay. And do you see um, next to twenty? the portion of the entry that starts with 2015, you see in the middle, it says currently five slash 10. Yes. Do you know what that refers to? The pain scale. Okay. And is that um, how Mr. Depp would report his pain to you? According to my notes. Okay, so now going to um, the entry for March 23rd. Um, first of all, do you see the portion of the entry that starts with 120? Yes. Is this uh, 120 in the morning? Sam? <coughs> According to this, yes. Okay. Um, do you see it 
says, um, patient states his wife is trying to argue with him. I see, I see that. Okay. And again, you have no reason to doubt the accuracy of your notes. Correct. Okay. Turning to the next page. Do you see the portion of the note that starts with 545? Yes. And it says call to loft, correct? Yes. Um, what does that refer to? I don't know specifically. Loft is where they were living. Is that the Eastern Columbia building? Correct. And then the next two sections of this note says 820 Torrid Val, and then at 1445, the same thing. Do you see that? Yes. Uh, what is that referring to? Um, incomplete notes. It would have been toward all in volume administered. And uh, do you have any recollection as to why those medications would have been administered? They were for his pain. Okay. And then do you see below that it says FU Thursday afternoon and Tuesday afternoon, skin graft bandage off week from Tuesday, pin off to in pin off in two weeks. Yes. Um what does this reflect? I don't recall. Did Mr. Depp have a skin graft on his finger? He did. And I think you testified, you just testified um, he had pins in his fingers as well, right? Sorry, I didn't hear that. Correct. Okay. Um, so at this time on March 23rd, he had bandages and a skin graft and pins in his finger? According to this, yes. And then um, do you see in the section that starts with 20, 20 hundred, um, patient informed wife is coming to talk to him and he became extremely anxious. Do you see that? I do. Do you have any recollection of why Mr. Depp was anxious? I do not. Um, do you remember being present for a fight with Mr. Depp between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? Um, shortly after Mr. Depp returned from Australia? I don't remember specifics. Do you recall um, a fight when um, Amber's sister Whitney was present? I don't recall. Um, Can we please pull up um, document H, please? I have it 27. Um, now, just for the record, um, this is a document that has the base number WH106 through 109. And Ms. Lloyd, you're not included on this, um, but I just wanna direct your attention to the first text message here. Um, it, this is, 
I can represent to you, these are text messages between Erin Borum and, and Whitney Hurd. Okay. Um, and before I proceed, do you know who Whitney Hurd is? Yes. Have you met her before? On how many occasions have you met Whitney? I don't recall. And um, what is Whitney's relation to Ms. Hurd? Sister. Um, so this first text message appears to be from Erin Borum and it says, Debbie just and it's on um, 14, it's at 1432 in military time at on the date, March 23rd, 2015. Do you see that? Yes. Okay, and it says, Debbie just told me what is going on and to check with you, is Amber awake or fall asleep? Do you see that? Yep. Do you recall reaching out to Erin Borum um, on this date? I do not. Um, directing your attention down to Whitney's, uh, to three messages down from Whitney, um, or excuse me, let's go up. Um, do you see that Whitney responds to Erin, she finally fell asleep. And then Erin says, thank goodness, she must be exhausted. Do you want me to come to the loft or is she safe and sound asleep? Do you see that? Yes. Okay, and then Whitney responds safe. No, she's not. She keeps saying she wants to kill herself. Do you see that? I do. Did you ever hear Miss Hurd um, say that she wanted to kill herself? No. Okay. Do these text messages combined with your notes refresh your recollection about an incident that occurred on March 23rd, 2015. I remember an incident, but I don't remember the date of it. Uh, what incident are you remembering? Um, there was an incident where Johnny and Amber got into a fight at the lofts. And what do you remember about that? Um, I was staying next door at a hotel and security um, had come to get me saying that they had had an argument and Johnny wanted to go back to 86. So is that, uh, is, sorry, is 86 um, the Sweetser property? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Continue. Um, And so I went, I went, went to the lofts and I remember that night, Amber was already leaving. She was in the um, lobby when we walked through. And when she saw that I was coming, she came back up to the apartment. And what happened when Ms. Hurd came back up to the apartment? I don't remember specifically what happened. I remember Johnny was sitting outside and we went to leave and somehow we didn't end up leaving. And why didn't you end up leaving? I don't remember. Um, do you remember who else was in the apartment? <laughs> um, I remember Travis, one of the security guards was there. Anyone else that you can remember? I don't remember exactly who else was there. Is Travis Travis McGivern? Correct. Um, do you recall seeing Ms. Hurd throw anything at Mr. Depp? I do not. Do you remember Mr. Depp throwing anything at Ms. Hurd? I don't recall. Do you remember witnessing any physical violence on I saw Johnny push over one of Amber's clothing racks. Okay. No physical violence directed at no human, violence. correct? Okay. Um, okay. And then do you, you said you didn't end up leaving the apartment after that, correct? At some point that night we left. And when you say we, um, who does that include? Myself, Johnny, and Travis. And where did you go? I don't remember. Okay. 
you know where Amber went that night? I don't know. Okay. But she didn't come with you? No. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our afternoon recess for 15 minutes, okay? Again, don't talk to anybody and don't, uh, don't do any outside research, okay? All right, we'll see you in 15 minutes. back at 345 then? Okay, all right, thank you.
Are we ready for the jury? Yes, okay. Are we ready? We're ready for the jury? There. <laughs> Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, if you want to continue with the testimony, thank you. Um, can you please go back to the nursing notes, which are Exhibit 23? And specifically, um, could we go to the entry for March 25th that starts on depth 1736 and goes on to 1737? Miss um, Lloyd, do you see at the bottom here where it says uh, 325? Yes. Okay. And um, if we could just go to the next page, um, you'd agree that this is a continuation of, of that note, correct? And you see under uh, 1330, it says patient states pain is four out of 10. Do you see that? I do. Okay, and what does that reflect? Um, pain was being rated at a four out of 10 out of 10 out of 10. Um, and then directing your attention down to the entry for March 26th. Um, this is a note that you prepared, yes? Yes. Okay. And just to make sure, I'm not sure I asked, but um, the the prior two notes we looked at, those are also notes you prepared, right? Correct. Um, now, if you could, why don't you take a moment and read through this note and just let me know when you're done. Now the beginning of the note starts at 1.45. Do you see that? Yeah. And so again, is that 1.45 in the morning? Correct. And it says here, RM called the patient's home. Upon arrival, patient and wife were fighting in the garage. Do you see that? I do. Do you remember this incident? I do not. Okay. Um, it says, when arguments became heated, patient removed himself from situation and had security drive him to another home. Do you see that? I do. Um, I think you just testified you don't remember witnessing this, correct? I do not. Um, but you don't have any reason to doubt the accuracy of what you wrote down in your note, correct? I do not. Um, had you seen Mr. Depp remove himself from fights before? in this manner? Yes. Um, 
Um, could we please turn to the entry from March 31st, which is on page uh, DEP 1740. Um, Ms. Lloyd, this is also a note you prepared? It is. Um, do you see um, the portion that starts 130, patient continues to CO pain 10 slash 10, which is causing anxiety and insomnia. Do you see that? Correct. And yes. what, what does this mean, plaintiff continues to CO pain 10 slash 10? Complain of. Okay, and the 10 out of 10 is the, the pain on the scale that you referenced previously, correct? Correct. Um, do you, uh, directing your attention down to the portion that starts with 1615, um, it says, at follow-up with surgeon, bandage was removed from skin graft Graft took 100%, but there was an infection under bolster. Finger was drained, pin was removed, and rosefin 1G was administered during appointment. Did I read that correctly? Yes. Even if my pronunciation is incorrect. Um, <laughs> um, uh, what, does this reflect that Mr. Depp had the bandage from his skin graft on his right middle finger removed on this date? Meaning removed at that time or removed for good? Uh, removed at that time. Yeah, at that time, that's what that would mean. And the pin from his finger was also removed? According to this. Okay. Um, and when you say the bandage was removed at that time, um, are you clarifying that because another bandage was put on? Um, I don't remember. That's why I was clarifying. Okay. Um, do you remember what type of bandages Mr. Depp had on his hand at that time? I didn't hear you. What type of bandage? Yes. Um, I, I don't remember specifics. Was it a hard cast or a soft cast? Soft. Okay. Was Mr. Depp's hand most, I'm sorry. I don't recall if it was a cast, but I know the bandage was soft. Okay. Do you recall whether Mr. Depp could move the hand that was bandaged? Hand, yes, for a while. He was, his finger was uh, like splinted. Did he grab anything with that hand? I remember him pretending he had a claw. He could do this. Were, were certain fingers bound together in the cast? I don't remember specifics. Um, Mr. Depp eventually uh, returned to Australia after the time period you were just discussing, correct? Correct. And you returned with him? Correct. And um, how long did you stay in Australia on that trip? I don't recall. Um, I'd like to direct your attention to the last page of this document, which has um, entry for July 1st. Do you see that? Yes. Um, please take a moment and read through this and just let me know when you're when you're done. And 
Jen. Okay. Um, this is a note you prepared, yes? Correct. Um, and do you remember the events reflected in this note? I do, I do not. Um, directing your attention to the portion that starts with 1235. Do you see where it says, RN received text from patient's assistant that the arguments between patient and wife are continuing and RN should come to the set to see patient. Did, you, did I read that correctly? Sorry, I didn't hear your response. Yes. Okay. Um, who was the assistant referred to here, if you can recall? I don't recall. He had two main assistants. And who were they? Stephen and Nathan. Do you recall both of them being in Australia? I don't recall if they were both there. Um, why did they, why did you understand, write that, um, why did you understand that you were being called to set? Objection to hearsay. Uh, I, I don't recall at the time. Um, all right, now directing your attention to the last part of this note that says 2100. Um, it says here, between shootings, patient was able to express his feeling to RN. He explained that his wife makes him feel that he can never do anything right and that they cannot have a conversation without her blowing up. Do you see that? Um, and I think you testified you don't recall having this exchange with Mr. Depp. Correct. Um, that goes on to say, patient was given positive reinforcement for expressing his feelings. Patient verbalized he knows it's best for them to take a break from each other when the fights start to escalate, but how she will follow him from room to room when he tries to get away. Do you see that? Okay. Have you ever personally observed Mr. Depp try to get away from Ms. Hurd and her then following him? Yes. But you don't recall him telling you in this specific instance? I do not. Um, and again, you don't um, have any reason to doubt the accuracy of this note? I do not. Okay. Um, this appears to be the last note reflected in this document. Do you see that? Yes. Um, and I think you said you don't recall specifically when you stopped caring for Mr. Depp, correct? Okay. Um, I'm sorry, what was the answer? Sorry. Correct. Sorry, thank you. Um, do you recall why you stopped providing nurse, nursing services to Mr. Depp? I do not. Um, did you continue to work for Dr. Kipper after you stopped uh, providing nursing services to Mr. Depp? Yes. Now, I think you testified earlier, you don't recall the last time you saw Mr. Depp? Not for sure, no. What's the last time that you remember seeing him? I went to his, um, one of his Hollywood vampire show out here in the desert. Was Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd still in a relationship when you saw Mr. Depp the last time? No. Not that I was aware of. Um, when was the last time you saw Ms. Hurd? I have no idea. Um, 
what's the last time you remember seeing her? I, I honestly don't know. During the time you were, you were Mr. Depp's nurse, did you ever see Mr. Depp physically abuse Ms. Hurd? No. If you had witnessed this, would you have documented in, documented it in your nursing notes? Yes. Did you ever see Mr. Depp throw anything at Ms. Hurd? I do not recall ever seeing him throw anything. Do you... Did you, during the time you cared for Mr. Depp, did you ever see Ms. Hurd physically abuse Mr. Depp? No. Did you ever see Ms. Hurd throw anything at Mr. Depp? I don't recall. In the time that you cared for Mr. Depp, did he ever tell you that Ms. Hurd was physically abusive towards him? I don't recall any conversations like that. Were you ever concerned for Mr. Depp's safety around Ms. Hurd? No. Uh, were you ever called over by Mr. Depp when he was in a fight with Ms. Hurd? I can't remember if it was when a fight, I remember being called over after fights. And why, to, to the extent you know, why were you being called over? My role with Johnny was medication or emotional support. Um, how many times did you travel with Mr. Depp while he was under your care? Multiple, but I wouldn't, I don't know a specific number. Um, did you ever witness Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd get in arguments while you were traveling? Yes. And what would Mr. Depp do in those circumstances? I don't remember specifics other than the one time I mentioned on the airplane. Did Mr. Depp ever book a separate room to separate himself from Ms. Hurd? I don't recall. Have you ever witnessed Ms. Hurd lose her temper? I don't recall specifics. What do you recall generally? I can't recall. Um, in the time you treated Mr. Depp, did you ever suspect he was under the influence of um, alcohol? recall specific times being of concern. Do you recall any specific instances when you were concerned he was under the influence of drugs that had not been prescribed by one of his physicians? I do recall. Um, did Mr. Depp ever tell you that someone had taken his prescription drugs? I don't recall a conversation. Uh, could we pull up exhibit I, please? Here, stand by. And just for the record, this is a document bearing the base number of Depp 7804 through uh, 7848. 728. Um, um, Ms. Lloyd, 
this, these are, I'll represent that these are text messages between you and Mr. Depp. I think you've seen some of, uh, some portions of this document um, when you were answering Mr. Nadelhoff's questions. Um, but I'd like to just direct your attention specifically to um, messages between you and Mr. Depp on May 27th, 2015, which appears on page um, 7841 and goes through to Sorry, Council, was there an instruction? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Um, can you please go to um, the page 7841? And we're going to be scrolling through uh, the pages after that. Um, I think it's up maybe two pages. Maybe. Yeah. Great. See the text message that starts in row the 320. Yes. Okay, so I would like you to please read through the text messages in row 320 through 337, which are um, from May 27th, 2015. And, and before you begin, um, I just want to confirm this number under participants next to your name. That's your phone number. Oh, yeah, but I was looking below. I was like, no, above, yes. Okay. Um, okay, so if you could read through the, end, the text messages reflected in rows 320 through 337, and then just let me know when you're done. Okay, I'm done through Okay, Are you done through 337? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was done through okay. 337. All right. Um, do you recall this exchange with Mr. Depp? I do not. Um, do you have an understanding of what you and Mr. Depp are discussing? I mean, just from what the text messages says, I can see what he was saying. And what was Mr. Depp saying? That his um, as-needed medications were missing. Um, 
anything else about how they came to be missing? I don't, I already don't remember what the above text stated. Okay, let's go to the text that's in row 33, please. Oh, 333, please. Um, and it says here, saw them, she wiped me out of everything. Need Adderall in the PRNs. I don't like to be out of stuff on the just in case kind of deal. I can't believe she's got the balls to flat out steal my meds for her fucking debaucheries. Hard game. After all, she is the si sister. X me. Did, you, did I read that right? Objection here. Do you have any understanding as to what Mr. Depp is referring to there? I do not. Do you know who he's referring to when he says she is the sister? I do not. Sure. How, how did Miss Heard treat you when you first um, started caring for Mr. Depp? She was accepting. Did that ever change in the time you treated Mr. Depp? I felt it did. You felt that at some time Miss Heard's um, demeanor towards you changed, in the, correct? Yes. Okay. When, when do you recall her demeanor changing? I don't recall specifically. How did her, how did her treatment of you change? It wasn't so much her treatment of me, of me hearing that she didn't want me around from other members. Who did you hear that from? Mm, I, I don't recall specific. It was from other staff, people that we worked with. Did you understand, do you have any understanding as to why she didn't want you around? I do not. Was Ms. Heard unfriendly towards you? No. Did Ms. Hurd ever get angry at you in your presence? Not that I recall. So just to be clear, your understanding that Ms. Hurd's um, feelings towards you changed is based off of what you heard from other people, correct? Yes. And your, your understanding was that, she, as you said, she didn't want you around, correct? Yes. Mr. Depp was your, Mr. Depp was your patient, correct? Correct. And Amber Heard was not your patient, is that right? Correct. You had, you had testified before, I believe, that you said one of your roles for Mr. Depp was providing him emotional support. Did I recall that correctly? Correct. That, you didn't have that role for Amber Heard, correct? Um, one of the exhibits I saw, it was exhibit, I believe, Lloyd 22, there was a reference to polysubstance abuse. What is that? Polysubstance abuse is used to determine the use of different drugs and or alcohol. So it's abusing more than one drug or alcohol, is that right? That's what it's, the term means, yes. Okay. Um, could we go to Lloyd 23. So Ms. Lloyd would be the, the March 7th, 2015 entries. March. Okay. And you see the entry for 1300? Yes. You wrote, um, patient was having a hard time leaving the house, so security suggested the MD and RN go to house to see patient. Upon arrival to house, patient was sitting in car ready to leave. MD assessed patient's finger and will spend more time with patient at the location he's being moved to. You wrote that? I did. And that was based, and you wrote that based off of information you were provided? I, I don't recall what that first sentence is regarding. All right, you don't have any reason to question the accuracy of the statement? I do not. Okay. Um, and then at 1130, the, the, the bottom entry, uh, you had testified a bit to that. Um, after the uh, 
highlighted portion, it says MD offered patient Valium 10 milligrams IM to help with this anxiety and anger, but patient refused. You wrote that? I did. Okay. And you have no reason to question the accuracy of that? I do not. Okay. Was Mr. Depp expressing any, do you recall Mr. Depp expressing any anger? Um, only what I see I referred to earlier in that note, the portion that was highlighted. Okay. Um, then you were, then it, the highlighting goes, um, going into the next page, patient was talking about wanting to drink alcohol, but did not obtain any. You wrote that? I did. And, and that was based off of what you saw with Mr. Depp? Um, according to this, yes. Okay. And there's no reason to question the accuracy of that note. Correct. Okay. And then 3815, uh, 145, you write, a patient has been on phone with his security guard that is staying with his wife at their rented house. Patient is discussing wanting to go home to LA tomorrow and rehashing night. Patient's personal security guard came to stay with patient. RN will be next door and instructed security to call during the night if needed. You, you wrote that? Correct. Um, do you know what you meant by um, patient is discussing wanting to go home to LA tomorrow and rehashing night? I don't, I do not recall what that's referring to. I believe you testified way in the beginning that um, you are, you go to Dr. Kipper as a patient. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Not going into detail, but how long have you been his patient? Since before I went to nursing, the early 2000s. Okay. And do you consider Dr. Kipper to be a friend? Yes. Okay. When you were with Mr. Depp in Australia, was he drinking at that time? I don't recall him drinking. Do you recall that he was specifically abstaining from drinking during that time? I don't recall. Did you ever see Ms. Hurd drink in front of Mr. Depp while he was abstaining from alcohol? Yes. Did you ever, um, did he ever ask her not to do that, to your knowledge? Not to my knowledge. All right. Your next witness. Your Honor, uh, Mr. Depp calls Sean Bett. Sean Bett. And hey, how do you spell the last name? I'm sorry. B-E-T-T. -T. -E -T -T. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, Mr. Bett. Good afternoon. Will you please state your name for the record? Joshua Sean Bett. Um, Mr. Bett, what is your occupation? I'm currently security with uh, Johnny Depp. And uh, your current employer is Mr. Depp? That's correct. And how long have you been in private security? Uh, approximately just over 20 years. Prior to working in private security, what were you doing professionally? I was with the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. And how long were you with the LA County Sheriff's Department? Um, just over 14 years. Over those 14 years, would you please describe for the jury your responsibilities in each position you held with the LA County Sheriff's Department? Yes, I was uh, assigned a custody division 
where we handled the intake and outtake of inmates. Then I was um, assigned to patrol division where I was assigned to crime units where we were, um, did calls for service, um, proactive, reactive arrest. After that, uh, I was assigned to gang details where we focused and saturated in certain areas within our district on gang shootings and things of that nature. Then after that, uh, I was assigned to gang units where uh, I performed search warrants and things of that nature, worked with homicide, worked with uh, special enforcement bureaus to uh, combat a lot of the crime that was taking place in our area. Did I did it come to a point where your employment with the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department came to an end? It did. And how did that come about? I was in a couple of uh, really bad traffic collisions. And during the course of duties, um, the County of Los Angeles um, issued a what they um, call a medical retirement or discharge. And so I was uh, kind of forced out based on my injuries. And after you left the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department, what did you do next? I was doing uh, some private investigations, and I also was doing um, security, estate security at various uh, residents and offices and working with different executives on certain details. And when you, when you were doing uh, estate security, did you work with a certain clientele? I did. What type of clientele? It ranged from um, CEOs, VPs of uh, Fortune 500 companies to certain uh, types of celebrities as well. How did you come to be employed by Mr. Depp? Uh, during the course of um, working um, estate security and the type of um, private security, you come in contact with a lot of um, other individuals and security companies. Uh, what we like to call networking. So when you network with a lot of individuals, um, they call you from time to time uh, to ask you if you're available to work certain days, weeks, events, and things of that nature. So I was asked uh, by an individual if I wanted to work the estate of Mr. Depp, and I, of course, said yes on a part-time basis at the time. And where is Mr. Depp, Mr. Depp's estate? It's in uh, West Hollywood, or it borders West Hollywood in the city of L.A. And approximately what year was that? That was at the end of either 2006 into the beginning of 2007, around that time. And since 2006, 2007, have you been employed exclusively by Mr. Depp? I have. I have done other work uh, over the years on a part-time basis, with other firms, but primarily uh, within the last, I'd say, um, six to eight years, it's been with Mr. Depp and his family. And would you please describe for the jury your general job responsibilities when you first started working for Mr. Depp? It was mostly uh, state security, so we um, controlled the, you know, people that arrived at the estate. Um, we were there to monitor the streets to make sure there were no overzealous fans or paparazzi that would hop fences or would try to sneak in bushes and take pictures of the family. Um, it also entailed um, taking the kids or the kid's mother to um, school or shopping or out to dinner and things of that nature. And when you say the kids, do you mean Mr. Depp's children? I do. And uh, who was their mother? Vanessa Paradis. Based on your observations, Mr. Bett, would you please describe what it was like working for Mr. Depp in the beginning? When I first met him. Oh, excuse me, objection what? Sorry. Day. What, day, at the foundation, I guess. When are we talking about? Is that what you asked? I, I, could you yeah. put your microphone on? I just. Vague foundation. Oh, vague. Also, just relevance. All right. What was it like working for? What's the relevance? The relevance is, Your Honor, just background, just to understand. I, I, I'll sustain the objection. We can move on. Okay. okay. Over the years, Mr. Bett, has your responsibilities evolved over time as you've uh, pr provided protection for Mr. Depp and his family? It has. And how so? Um, I started to travel a little bit more uh, with them out of state and then eventually out of the country and worldwide. 
did your interactions with Mr. Depp also evolve from the beginning to, to now? They did. I was around him uh, quite a bit uh, when he was in town. Um, in the very beginning of my employment with him, um, he was doing a lot of movies. He was out of the state. He was out of the country a lot. Um, so once he was back in town, if I wasn't with his children, um, taking them around to school and so forth, um, I would be around Mr. Depp and provide you know security for him when he went out and about in public and so forth. Would you please describe for the jury your general access to Mr. Depp while providing security for him? I had uh, access to him at any given time. He had an open door policy. Uh, I had access uh, to his residence, the inside, all the rooms at any given time in the event there was an emergency or anything like that. And when traveling with Mr. Depp, was the access the same? It was. Um, I have access to his hotel room. Uh, again, if there's an emergency, um, I have, uh, you know, wherever he's at, uh, I make sure, and it's mandatory, that I and other security personnel have access to him. And would you please describe for the jury your current job responsibilities? Uh, basically to provide security for him and his well-being, uh, albeit if he's in a hotel, a residence, or when he's out and about in public. Has your job title changed from the beginning to now? Yes, I primarily now just um, work with Mr. Depp, uh, not so much with his children anymore. So I guess you could say, uh, for a lack, for a term, you know, when we're in the United States, you know, I'm kind of his lead security guy. Are there other members of uh, Mr. Depp's security team? There are. And would you please name some of those security members? Uh, that would be Malcolm Conley, who primarily does um, his European um, uh, security, although he does come from the States from time to time. Um, Leonard Damien, Mark Gibbs, um, Travis McGivern, uh, Starling Jacobs. Who is Jerry Judge? Jerry Judge used to be his chief security um, individual. He was with him uh, uh, well over 20 years, I believe, and we lost him a few years ago to cancer. Over the course of your employment with Mr. Depp, um, have you seen him consume alcohol? I have. How frequently? It ranged. Sometimes uh, I wouldn't see him drink at all, and there'd be other times he, you know, would have a glass of wine or two. And based on your observations, um, how would you describe Mr. Depp's demeanor after drinking alcohol? His demeanor is the same as if you were talking to him. Um, I would joke around with some of the other uh, security personnel. He's, you know, my terminology would be he's kind of too cool for school. He goes into that kind of Jack Sparrow mode and he just, you know, he's very likable, you know, whether he drinks or he doesn't drink. Based on your observations, have you ever seen Mr. Depp appear intoxicated? Objection leading. Hmm. Overruled, I'll allow it. I've seen him slightly intoxicated. And again, based on your observations, what is Mr. Depp's demeanor like when he appears slightly intoxicated? It's the same as if he, you know, had a glass of sparkling water. I mean, he's just very low key. He's easy to get along with. And, um, you know, he just seems to me, I mean, he handles alcohol a lot better than I would. And over the course of your employment with Mr. Depp, have you ever seen him consume drugs? I haven't. Are you generally aware that Mr. Depp has used drugs over the years? I am. And how are you aware of that? From him. Do you know who Ms. Hurd is? I do. Who is Ms. Hurd? She is Mr. Depp's ex-spouse. When did you first meet Ms. Hurd? Uh, it probably would have been... Uh, around 2011, 12 maybe, maybe around 2010, it was some time ago. And how did you first meet her? 
Uh, she came over to his Hollywood uh, estate. And would you please describe for the jury some of your er early interactions with Miss Hurd? Um, she was very pleasant, um, very easy to get along with. Uh, I mean, she was almost as if she was a, a next door neighbor, just always had a smile to her face and um, just, um, you know, just, you know, no issues at the time. And, you know, I liked her, liked her a lot. In the early days of, of Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's relationship, did you have an opportunity to observe them together? I did. How frequently? In the early stages, it was um, kind of on a part-time basis because a lot of times, um, you know, he was traveling or he was out of town working on films and so forth. But when they were in L.A., I saw them quite frequently, which could have been the days that I worked, which varied um, anywhere between four, five, six days a week. And based on what you observed of them together, how would you describe Ms. Hurd's relationship with Mr. Depp when they first started seeing each other? Yes. Objection, foundation. All right, foundation. Your Honor, I, I believe I've laid the foundation that he saw them frequently together when they first started dating. How he would describe their relationship is All right. not the foundation. For I'll, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. After Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd started a romantic relationship, um, did you become familiar with any of Ms. Hurd's family or friends? I did. Which ones? Uh, her sister, um, Whitney Hurd. Um, her good friend, um, Raquel, or Rocky Pennington. Um, another friend, Io Tillett Wright. Um, Ms. Pennington's... Uh, Boyfriend at the time, um, Josh Drew. And did you have an opportunity to observe Mr. Depp's interactions with uh, Ms. Hurd's family and friends? I did. And how would you generally describe their interactions? Um, he was very open and warm to them. He, you know, offered them, you know, uh, whatever they needed. They were constantly coming around the estate. Um, you know, eventually he let a couple of them live in his penthouses downtown for free. He would let them, a few of them, drive his nice um, Dodge Challenger in and around town and take on trips. Did you have an opportunity to observe how Ms. Hurd's friends and families treated Mr. Depp? I did. Um, they were obviously very pleasant to him because uh, you know, I, from observing, they were taking advantage of him. So they were being obviously extra nice to the hand that feeds them, and that's just progressed over a period of time. How did Ms. Hurd interact with you? All right, what's the relevance? It's just background, Your Honor. It's I'll sustain the objection and we can move on. Okay. Were you ever present, Mr. Bett, for any conversations amongst uh, Ms. Hurd and her friends? I was. Uh, can you describe any particular one that stands out to you? Objection, Your Honor. Leading calls for hearsay. All right. Well, to the extent, Your Honor, we're offering Ms. Hurd's statements, it's not hearsay. All right. Um, well, if you can lay a foundation to that, I'll assume you will. Do you recall any specific instances, Mr. Bett, where um, you heard Ms. Hurd say something to her friends? I do. Okay. Can you describe one of those situations? Yes. Um, the first one, I was taking her from um, Mr. Depp's property to uh, her apartment um, in the south end of the city that I believe Mr. Depp was paying for. She was sitting next to me in the vehicle. Um, she was talking to a girlfriend or a friend where they were talking about another male. And she says to the friend, girlfriend, whoever she was talking to, you know, all men are idiots. You know, you shouldn't trust that guy. And then she turned to me and she said, you know, sorry, Sean, not you. I didn't mean that. And I just shrugged it off like it's not a big deal. 
you remember approximately when that that conversation took place? I would say probably maybe 2012 or 13, perhaps, perhaps even um, a little bit sooner than that. It was a long time ago. And over the years of Ms. Hurd's and Mr. Dapp's relationships, um, did you have an opportunity to observe how the relationship evolved? I did. And well, I'll just see what the next question is. Thank you. That's fine. Um, did you notice any changes in the relationship between Mr. Dapp and Ms. Hurd? Objection, vague, foundation, relevance, and leading. All right. Well, I'll, I'll allow it if you could get a timeline set in there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Did you notice any changes in the relationship between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd after the initial stages of them beginning to engage in a romantic relationship? I did. And would you please describe those changes that you observed? Well, I noticed they went from being that loving, almost like high school couple where they were very giddy towards each other. He was very happy. She was very happy to, they started to argue. Um, they started to argue periodically and then the arguing uh, started to progress more and more and more and uh, it was always taking place because you know Miss Hurd would start this argument Did you ever observe uh, Miss Hurd drink alcohol? I did. How often? It just varied uh, there would be you know some days when I was working that I would see her there would be other days I didn't see her or she was out of town working so it just really depended on when she was around and when she was around for the most part you know she was drinking you know sometimes I'd see a glass in her hand and sometimes I'd see her you know have two glasses if I was in the presence of her and Mr. Depp obviously. Based on your observations did it ever appear that Miss Hurd was intoxicated? There were times when I went into the penthouse or we were at the Hollywood estate and you know Based on my training experience in law enforcement, I could tell she Objection, was you know, slightly that's, intoxicated. Oh, excuse me. Excuse that's me. kind of getting uh, getting into the realm of expert testimony. He's not a designated expert. Perhaps we can have okay. him answer the question without your, any citing to any experience in, in law enforcement, Mr. Bett. I'll just say an objection. Let's go to the next question. Okay. Understood. Do you recall observing any arguments between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? Several. Can you tell the jury about one that comes to mind? Uh, there was an incident, uh, for example, um, I just happened to be on the, the floor of their penthouse, which is on the top floor of this building. Um, I was outside by the pool area uh, reading a book, and when I was walking back past their door, I could hear shouting, I could hear her voice shouting, um, you know, at a very high pitch. So I didn't rush in right away or anything. I just kind of stood by the door. Um, he was, you know, speaking with her, and then the voices, you know, the shouting act dissipated, and then, you know, there was music playing, and then they started talking. So I kind of just uh, stood by the door, briefly, and then I went into another section of the penthouse floor. Do you recall approximately the time frame of that argument? As far as the year or how long it lasted? I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Bett. The year. Um, that could have been perhaps 2012, 2013, maybe a little thereafter. Did Ms. Hurd ever confide in you? about her relationship with Mr. Depp? Uh, briefly. Do you recall her saying anything in particular about her relationship with Mr. Well, Depp? There was a couple of occasions. There was one occasion in which they had an argument um, at his West Hollywood address. Um, Johnny told me, you know, just take her down downtown to the penthouse so she can relax and cool off. Um, as we were driving downtown, you know, she was crying. This was at the point when uh, the, the arguing was taking place quite frequently. And I was telling her, I go, you know, I said, Amber, you know, this can't continue. You guys are either going to kill each other or you're going to be in jail. 
and you know with tears and everything she says but i love him and i uh, i'm not going to lose him and i says but you guys can't keep doing this um so we eventually got to the downtown apartments you know she said thank you i dropped her off um and then i went back to the west hollywood address What did you mean by, you know, this can't continue when you told Ms. Heard that? The constant arguing and bickering and so forth, because as I said, it was slowly progressing and, um, you know, it was just going to turn out bad eventually. I believe you testified earlier that you observed many arguments between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd. Do you recall anything that Ms. Hurd said to Mr. Depp while they were arguing? There was an incident because, as I said, the arguing progressed over and over as the years continued. Um, he would text me uh, when I was working saying, you know. Objection, Your Honor. Calls for hearsay. All right. I'll sustain that objection if you want to. Mr. Bat, if you could just focus on what Ms. Heard, you overheard Ms. Heard say while observing arguments between Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard. Uh, I overheard her saying to him, uh, he's a fat ass, fuck you, Johnny, and you too, Sean, uh, at one time when, you know, she went to throw a, a water bottle or a plastic cup down the stairs and it bounced kind of in Johnny's direction, but I ended up getting him and we you know got out of there as soon as possible did you ever see miss heard throw anything other than a water bottle it was a water bottle or a coffee cup it was something plastic other than a water bottle or a plastic cup did you ever see miss heard throw anything else um no other than what he told me when she threw a broken bottle and there sliced his finger and sir i'll sustain the objection the jury will strike that that testimony, please just answer the question asked. And when there's an objection, do not speak, okay? Right. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. After observing several arguments between Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard, what happened next? Uh, as far as a time frame, um, well, as I said, the arguing, when it would continue, we would always, you know, I'd put him in the car and we'd drive back to his West Hollywood address, um, at which point it just depended on the, the week or the day or the month, you know, um, they would reconcile within hours or it might take a day where he would stay overnight at his West Hollywood address. And then, you know, I would take him back the next day and, you know, they would reconcile by, you know, talking and um, she would have, you know, candles lit or, you know, a bottle of wine open with glasses and, you know, with within, you know, certain evenings, you know, I'd get a text message from her, you know, asking me to go pick up uh, dinner at local restaurants they frequented. Did you ever see any violence between Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp? No. Other than the occasion when you saw Ms. Hurd throw something plastic in Mr. Depp's direction. Did you ever see Ms. Heard hit Mr. Depp? No. Did you ever see any physical injuries on Ms. Heard? I didn't. Did you ever see any physical injuries on Ms. Heard on occasions after Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard argued? Objection, Your Honor. Foundation. All right. You want a time frame to that? Absolutely. Yes, sir. On the occasions that you witnessed Ms. Heard and Mr. Depp argue, after that, did you ever see any physical injuries on Ms. Heard? That's the, exactly the same point. question. Okay. All right, move on. Okay. At any point during during Ms. Heard's and Mr. Depp's relationship, did you ever see any injuries on Ms. Heard? No. How about on Mr. Depp? Yes. When did you observe injuries on Mr. Depp? Uh, the first time would have been around um, 20, 
14, I guess, um, in which he had a, uh, his finger was damaged from uh, an incident in Australia. Do you know how Mr. Depp's finger was damaged? Objection, foundation. Foundation? It's just background, if he knows. I won't ask the uh, I'll the sustain the question. objection, he, unless he was in Australia and saw it himself. Okay. Okay. When else did you see injuries on Mr. Depp? I saw another injury around, um, would have been March of 2015. He had um, uh, a swollen kind of cheekbone eyelid. Your Honor, if I may please pull up a photograph, exhibit number 146. Right, just to the witness? Exhibit? Just for the witness, that's okay. correct. I'm sorry, 146? Yes, thank okay, you, Your thank Honor. You. And that's plaintiffs, obviously, the plaintiffs, exhibit 146. Mr. Bett, do you recognize this photograph? I do. And how do you recognize it? Because I took that picture. Why did you take this photograph? Well, we needed it as evidence in case um, um, Ms. Hurd tried to make allegations uh, towards Mr. Depp. I was emphatic with him, telling him that's a serious mark and we need to photograph it. I'll just move to strike for foundation. I'll allow that answer. But that's thank you. And when did you take this photograph? It would have been around March of 2015. Your Honor, we ask that this photograph please be published to the jury and admitted into evidence. Any objection to 146? No, Your Honor. All right, 146 in evidence and be published to the jury. Thank you. Mr. Bett, uh, what does this photograph show? It depicts a uh, swollen upper left cheekbone with uh, redness to it. Thank you. Did you notice any other injuries on Mr. Depp? On that specific day, no. Later in time, did you ever notice any other injuries on Mr. Depp? I did. Can you please describe what you recall? It was around uh, December of that same year, 2015. Um, he uh, got into an argument with Ms. Hurd and she scratched him and he had injuries. Objection, Your Honor. Sustain the objection, only your observations are what you saw. Yeah. All right, thank you. Mr. Bett, can you please describe the injury that you saw on, on Mr. Depp? Uh, yes, he had scratch marks um, around his nose area. Um, I believe on one of the sides of his face in the cheek area and then on his forehead. And if we could just have just published to the witness uh, plaintiff's exhibit number 65. 65. And Mr. Bett, this is a three-page document, so if I can have Mr. Arnold Blair please scroll down. Okay. Okay, thank you. Do you recognize these photographs? I do. And how do you recognize them? Because I took them. When did you take them? Uh, December, mid-December 15th. And why did you take these photographs? I took them to show proof that uh, he once again had injuries sustained in an altercation. Your Honor, we'll move to publish 
these photographs to the jury and um, for admins. All right. Any objection to 65? No, Your Honor. All right. 65 in evidence. It's, it can be published. And Mr. Bett, would you please describe what we're looking at here? Uh, the first picture, um, there's a laceration on the left side of his nose. Uh, it looks like the left upper cheek has slight, a slight bruise to it. And then on his forehead, right above the ridge line, just um, almost to the center, it looks like there's a red scratch mark above his left eye and to the right. Do you see that in the same subsequent pictures in page two? Okay, page two, I see a um, scratch mark, a vertical scratch mark adjacent to his right ear um, on the right side of his face. Same question for page three. Page three, uh, there's a scratch mark on the lower right portion of his chin. There's that same scratch mark on uh, the center left side of his nose. And you can see the frontal portion of that bruise. It's on the left side under his eye. Were you surprised to see Mr. Depp with these injuries? Objection leading. I sustain it's a leading. Did you ever see any similar injuries on Ms. Hurd? None. Did you see ever ever see any injuries on Ms. Hurd? I didn't. Did Ms. Hurd ever tell you she was being abused by Mr. Depp? She didn't. Did she ever ask you for help? No. Did you ever see any evidence that Ms. Hurd was being abused by Mr. Depp? I did. Turning to April 21st, 2016, Mr. Betts, uh, do you remember anything about that day? Uh, yes, that was the day or evening that Ms. Hurd was celebrating her birthday with some friends. Do you recall what birthday Ms. Hurd was celebrating? I'm sorry? Do you recall what birthday Ms. Hurd was celebrating? I believe it was her 30th, 29th or 30th. If we may, can we can we just remove the exhibit? Oh yeah, Thank sorry. You. Thank you. Other than Miss Hurd's birthday celebration that evening, do you recall anything else about April twenty first, two thousand sixteen? Um, he had a uh, meeting that afternoon, and uh, which extended uh, into the evening. And that was the, as I said, the night of her birthday party uh, where they got into another argument and she had uh, struck him in the face. All right, I'll objection, move to strike, Your Honor. Sir, if you didn't see it, you can't testify to it, correct? Correct. All right, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the jury will strike that answer. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor. Were you with Mr. Depp when he attended uh, the meeting that, that you mentioned earlier? I was. Okay. And uh, if you know, who was that meeting with? It was with his uh, accountant. And who was Mr. Depp's accountant? Ed White. And where did that meeting take place? It took place at his, production, his old uh, production office um, in the Los Angeles area. What happened after the meeting ended? Uh, when the meeting ended, we drove to his um, West Hollywood address, which might have been maybe five, ten minutes away. He had to go inside the house and retrieve something. Um, I don't know what it was. Uh, we were only there a short period of time. And we were kind of rushing because, you know, we had been running late because it was a birthday dinner. And then we eventually left thereafter and headed back down to... Um, the penthouses downtown Los Angeles. 
And how would you describe Mr. Depp's demeanor after the meeting ended with Mr. White? Um, to me, he looked fine. He just, he, you could tell he was in a hurry and he was, you know, telling me, okay, we got to hurry up and go to the house real quick before we go downtown. Uh, but other than that, he appeared fine to me. And uh, based on your observations, Mr. Bett, did Mr. Depp appear to you to be intoxicated? He didn't. I believe you testified that after you left the meeting, you went to Mr. Depp's home, his residence in West Hollywood, and then on to the Eastern Columbia building. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. What happened after you arrived at the penthouses for Miss Hurd's birthday dinner? Um, we went upstairs, and she was having a dinner with her friends in one of the penthouses. I believe it was penthouse number five. Um, we entered uh, the front door to that penthouse. Um, Amber stood up. Uh, she walked towards Mr. Depp. She had a look of, you know, you could tell she was upset, the fact that he was late. You know, Mr. Depp apologized to everybody, apologized to Amber, and, you know, told her, you know, sorry, baby, or words to that effect for being late. She gave him a hug and a kiss and said, you know, come sit down, sugar. Was that a nickname, a common nickname Ms. Heard used for Mr. Depp? Yes, she used to call him that quite frequently in front of me. Approximately what time did you arrive to the Eastern Columbia building? It would have been somewhere between maybe 9 and 10 o'clock in the evening. Do you know what time the birthday dinner for Ms. Hurd was scheduled to start? I can't remember the exact time. Do you recall how late you and Mr. Depp were to the birthday dinner? I knew we were running behind, but as I said, I didn't know actually what time the dinner was starting. And once you arrived at the penthouses at the Eastern Columbia Building, did you go inside? Briefly, I had a couple of Mr. Depp's um, computer bags and bags with me, and I just set them down in the corner, and then I exited thereafter. How long did you stay at the Eastern Columbia Building after exiting the penthouse? I was probably there perhaps maybe another hour or two, and then I would have been relieved by the night shift um, security personnel, um, Travis McGivern. Did you happen to work the next day on April 22nd, 2016? I did. Where did you start working on that day? On that day, I started, uh, I drove to his West Hollywood address um, because Mr. McGivern had sent me a text message uh, stating they had an argument. Objection, and he hearsay. All right, I'll sustain as the hearsay. Why did you start your shift at uh, the Sweetser property or Mr. Depp's West Hollywood property as opposed to the Eastern Columbia building? Because that's where Mr. Depp was at the time. Do you recall anything specific about that day, April 22nd, 2016? Um, just he had told me they had a... So I'll sustain objection. You cannot say what he told you, sir. Sorry. I'm sure you've testified before, correct? I have. Yes, thank you. Did you see Mr. Depp when you arrived to the, his West Hollywood home on April 22nd, 2016? I did. Did you observe any injuries on Mr. Depp? I did. In this time frame of April 2016, do you recall Mr. Depp's mother having any health problems? Yes. What do you recall about her health problems? At that time, she was very critical. She had been suffering um, from cancer for some time, a few years, I believe. And um, at that stage, um, she was slowly deteriorating. Um, so it was approximately um, a month before she passed. Do you recall when she passed away? I believe it was around May 20th. 19th. And how did you learn that she had passed away? Mr. Depp told me. 
And again, based on your observations, how would you describe Mr. Depp's demeanor when he informed you that his mother had passed away? Well, he just lost his mother, so he was, you know, uh, you could tell he was, you know, very sad, and he was mourning. And so I just left him alone until he needed me for whatever I had to do for him that day. And to your knowledge, Mr. Bett, uh, when was the next time Mr. Depp saw Ms. Hurd? Um, maybe a month later, sometime in May. And I'm sorry, was that a month after the birthday dinner on April 21st, 2016? Objection leading. Oh, sustain is deleting. To your knowledge, after April 21st, 2016, when did Mr. Depp next see Ms. Hurd? In my presence, he would have seen her May 21st. And was that after Mr. Depp's mother passed away? Correct. That would have been a day after she passed. I have approximately 10, 15 minutes left. It, it, I'll let you finish. If you, is Thank that okay with the jury? We'll finish at least a direct. Okay. okay. Thank you. That's fine. Turning to May 21st, 2016, um, please tell us what you remember about that day. Um, that day we were at his... Um, West Hollywood address, um, Jerry Judge, um, his chief security guard was with me and with us at the estate at the time. Um, later on in that evening, um, Mr. Depp uh, told us that he wanted to go down and retrieve some items from the penthouse. Um, and he also wanted to talk uh, briefly with Ms. Hurd. Objection hearsay, Your Honor. It's just to establish. All right. Do you want to talk to Ms. Hurd? That's fine. We'll, we'll leave it at that. Next question. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. So you were working on May 21st. Is that right? I was. Okay. Did you end up taking Mr. Depp to the penthouses at Eastern Columbia Building? I did, and Mr. Judge uh, was along with me as well. And do you remember approximately what time you arrived at the penthouses? It would have been some time after... 7.30, um, maybe 7.45, 7.15, around that time frame. And was that in the evening? It was. Did you enter the penthouses with uh, Mr. Depp? I did, myself and uh, Jerry Judge and Mr. Depp. And what did you see when you first entered the penthouse? Uh, when we first walked in um, on the center island in the kitchen, there were candles lit on the table um, there was uh, a couple gla wine glasses that were empty, and there was a bottle of wine that was open. Um, there was also music playing in the background through the speakers that were in the wall. Did you see Ms. Hurd when you first entered the penthouse? I did. What happened after you entered the penthouses? Uh, after we entered the penthouses, um, Jerry Judge um, told Johnny that myself and yes, objection here. All here right, second. I'll sustain the objection. All right, next question. Okay. Did you stay inside the penthouse with Mr. Judge and Mr. Depp? No. Shortly thereafter, Mr. Judge and I exited the penthouse and stood outside the door briefly. How long would you? estimate that you stood outside the door of the penthouse? It would have been approximately maybe 10 minutes, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less. And after standing outside the penthouse for 10 minutes, give or take, where did you go next? We walked down the hallway to uh, penthouse number five Penthouse number five has two doors. There's a main entrance that takes you into the living room. Next to it, around the corner, it's a continuation of the penthouse, which is like a storage area. It also has, um, it had a couch at the time and a TV for 
the security personnel. So once we were at the penthouses, we could go in there, have lunch or dinner, or watch a little bit of TV. And then, um, you know, whenever Mr. Depp or Ms. Hurt would leave and uh, I'd have to drive or the other security personnel, uh, we would get a text or they would come knock on the door and we would leave. And when you first arrived to the penthouses with Mr. Depp, uh, based on your observations, did was he drinking? He had had some uh, glasses of wine at the um, meeting he was at with his accountant. Apologies, Mr. Bad. I meant on May 21st, 2016. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you observe Mr. Depp drinking any alcohol that day? Uh, he might have had uh, a glass of wine in the car, uh, but as far as um, the entire day, I wouldn't have known how much he drank. Did he appear intoxicated to you when he arrived to the Eastern Columbia building? No. So you went to the storage area of the, of the penthouse area. How long were you there? Uh, we might have been there maybe 10 minutes, five minutes. Um, we got uh, something to drink, and then we exited that you know, penthouse I described, or that penthouse storage area. And where did you go next? We walked down the hall towards um, Mr. Depp's penthouse, uh, which would have been penthouse number three. And did you stand outside the door, or did you go in? We, as we approached the door, we could hear the screaming and shouting from Ms. Hurd. So I immediately opened up the door, and Mr. Judge and I ran in there. What do you remember Ms. Hurd screaming or shouting? It, it appeared she was shouting profanities. So once Mr. Judge and I went through the front door, um, Mr. Depp would have been standing directly in front of us, maybe about 20 feet, because parallel to us walking in or running in, there was a wall. It was the, the way the, the kitchen was set up, it was almost like an L shape. So you walk in, and then you'd have to make a left. So Mr. Depp would have been standing in front of us, and he glanced at us. As soon as Mr. Judge and I rounded the corner, I saw Ms. Hurd standing next to her good friend, um, Raquel Pennington. And um, how was Ms. Hurd standing? Where were her hands? Her hands would have been in this motion. Um, once Mr. Judge and I rounded that corner and she saw both Jerry and I, she had this look of surprise on her face. And then she looked at Mr. Depp and us and she shouted out loud, um, this is the last time you do this to me. At which point Mr. Depp looked at her and said, what the hell are you talking about? At that point, Mr. Judge tapped you know, Mr. Depp on the arm and told him, boss, let's leave. So we gathered, uh, there was a couple of computer bags that was right on a table, and we exited the uh, front door to penthouse number three. Based on your observations, did you see... Did you have a clear view of Ms. Hurd? I did. Did you have a clear view of her face? I did. Did you observe any injuries on Ms. Hurd's face? I did. Did you see any redness? I did. Swelling? None. Was Ms. Hurd holding her face? She wasn't. So what happened next? Um, we exited penthouse number three and we walked down the hallway. Um, right when we were getting close to penthouse number five door, um, Mr. Depp says, I need to get in here and look for something. So I opened up the door for him. We went inside and that's when I saw Ms. Hurt's friend, um, Raquel Pennington's boyfriend, Josh Drew, and another unknown female that I'd never seen before, and there was a small dog kind of um, walking around. Uh, Mr. Depp, uh, I believe he said, get the fuck out of my apartment. So Mr. Drew nodded his head and basically said, okay. Uh, the female picked up the dog, um, and they exited the front door to that uh, penthouse. 
what did Mr. Depp do next? He was walking around the kitchen area, uh, living room area. He might have gone upstairs briefly. I can't remember. I don't know what he was looking for. Um, I didn't ask him. Mr. Judge didn't ask him. Uh, eventually, um, he didn't find whatever he was looking for, and we exited penthouse number three. And while Mr. Depp was in penthouse number three, did you observe him cause any damage? No. Did you observe him cause any damage to any of the penthouses on May 21st, 2016? No. Did you see Mr. Depp become violent with anyone while at the penthouses on May 21st, 2016? Objection meeting. I'll allow it, Mr. Wayne. I didn't. Mr. But have you ever seen Mr. Depp become violent with Ms. Heard? I haven't. Thank you. I have nothing further. All there. right. You can stay right there, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the testimony for today. So uh, I'll release you. We'll be back here at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Please have a safe, quiet night. Please take care of yourself. Take your vitamins. We need you. Um, and we will see you uh, in the morning. Don't talk to anybody. Don't do any outside research, okay? All right, thank you. Mr. Betts, since you're still in the middle of your testimony, you cannot talk to the attorneys or Mr. Depp about your testimony or about this case, okay? I understand. All right, and we'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Okay, right. sir? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. You're, you're released. All right. Anything else for this evening? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Just um, wanted a point of clarification. Okay. Okay, sure. Go ahead. Um, well, perhaps we Would you approach. Would you approach? Okay, sure. 